listen. sounds echo through the halls whenever candlelights flicker where the air is deathly still that is the time when ghosts are present practicing their terror with ghoulish delight there's no turning back now just after sundown when darkness creeps over the land the dark figures lurk in the shadows the fangs glisten in the moonlight and the ghosts of the world become restless we begin our journey join us as we travel into the world of the paranormal the supernatural and the bizarre on night watch with your hosts, Todd Sheets, Chris Weisbach, and Hugh McLanahan. And welcome back to Nightwatch. I'm your host, as always, Todd Sheets, here with Johnny Reed. Greetings, salutations. So glad you can make it, Johnny. Always. Hugh disappeared. I have no idea. Where I think he's getting a drink or something. I th- all the way in Scotland, pr- Probably. apparently. Yes, apparently so. But we're still here. We're very excited. Um, you know, our, our next guests are phenomenal. This year, uh, you know, every year you look for those hidden gems because you get so tired of the same old, same old at the multiplex. Just direct like Magic Mike. I mean, I don't want to see any more of that. And here it is. I found this this little amazing movie that had such big ambition, such incredible ideas, and most of all, such amazing performances. Uh, and I was so happy to find out it was directed by our, our next guest and it starred both of them. Uh, uh, the Victim was the name of the movie. It's in my top five of the year. It just shot straight into the top five movies of the year. And, and I felt like it was just an amazing uh, film, a, an accomplishment. Uh, they don't make movies like that anymore, I like to say. And uh, so everybody, uh, welcome to the show, Michael Bean and uh, Jennifer Blank Bean. Welcome, guys. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. You've just put a huge, huge smile on Michael's sweet little face. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Uh, well. you know, it's, a pro- it's a project that uh, I'm proud of, uh, mostly because um, we, uh, we did it so quickly. We, um, we uh, you know, found out that uh, the, the, the money to make it, uh, which was a very small amount, uh, was good uh, when a check cleared uh, that was written to me. And I realized I had to write something in a hurry, and uh, so and 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 so I wrote it, and we went into pre-production immediately, and uh, it took us three weeks to uh, uh, write the script. It took me scri- uh, three weeks to write the script, and we did pre-production during those three weeks, which is not the way you really want to do your pre-produ- pre-production. Here, so you you kind of want to have your script, but we didn't. Um, and, uh, so we did locations and casting and dealt with the Screen Actors Guild and, um, all that kind of stuff, crewed up and everything during that three week period of time that I was writing the script. And then we shot it in 12 days. Man. So, I mean, like, uh, if you think about the Terminator, that was shot in 11 weeks and that was back in 1983, we made it, it came out in 84. So... I mean, the fact that it was made in 12 days, um, um, I'm very proud of the kind of, uh, you know, low-budget grindhouse approach that we took and how fast um, 
you know, we we made it, and the you know the quality. Um, we think, I think, um, uh, you're very kind um, uh, with your um, praise for the movie. We've gotten a lot of great reaction and a lot of wonderful, wonderful reviews from uh, not only um, um, genre sites but uh, mainstream media, and so it's been a kind of a uh, a really wonderful experience all the way around for both myself and Jennifer, who really is responsible for 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 finding the material, uh, finding the money, and then t- starting what is now Blanc Bean Productions, and mm-hmm. and and we are going to continue to make movies with other filmmakers um, and on small budgets, and um, hopefully this will be the first of of, of many movies that Jen- Jennifer and I. Um, uh, work on together in a pr- producing uh, capacity. The chemistry so. you guys had in that movie, uh, I mean, for those of you who haven't seen The Victim, if you haven't seen it yet, hunt down a copy of that movie. You can find it everywhere, everywhere from Walmart to Blockbuster and everywhere in between has it. And uh, let me tell you, the chemistry, uh, that's one of the things I loved about the film was the, the characterizations and the chemistry that immediately... Uh, you and Jennifer had together on the screen. I thought that was one of those classic chemistries that you don't see that often anymore. A lot of chemistry is forced in modern cinema, and uh, you guys had that classic kind of chemistry that it was just it was a natural. Well, you know, it's interesting that you would say that. I mean, it, it's not surprising because um, you know we are um, in love with each other, and uh, and we do fight like cats and, and dogs, and we're very <laughs> volatile. Both of us are very passionate good. and volatile and passionate. And- yeah, yeah. Sensual and and in love and all of those things. So I think if it translates a little bit on film, that probably would make sense. It's interesting that you say that though, because um, I've done um, a lot of interviews uh, for the movie, and um, uh, most people uh, when they talk about uh, the great chemistry, talk about um, Jennifer's great uh, chemistry with. Um, they talk about my chemistry with Danielle in the right, flashback yeah. scene. And, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't realize that's what he was going for. I thought I was thinking sexual chemistry. Um, well, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of times they, uh, you know, identify with those flashbacks and go, wow, I can't believe the, uh, the chemistry between the two girls and all this stuff. And, you know, the truth is we're, we're real life best friends and you guys know that. And, uh, and so that's wonderful that it, uh, it, it, it shows, but, um, of course I love somebody identifying the chemistry between Michael and I, so. That makes me happy. Oh, of course, of yeah. course. It kind of sells it. Um, you know, <laughs> totally, totally. Well, also, I think there's, you know, some fun, there's some fun, have you watched the behind the scenes and stuff that comes with uh, the DVD or Blu-ray package? Oh, yeah, have yeah. Seen yeah. I, I've seen that Blu-ray so many times, it's a wonder I haven't worn it out. <laughs> awesome, I love it, I love that. That's You're, 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 you're wonderful, we're just going to keep you around. Um, <laughs> So, um, <laughs> if you'll have us, we, I will. But, um, yeah, and again, I want to. I'm just going to apologize on the air uh, for anybody who was was anticipating us. Sorry that we were a little delayed, but we're here now. That's right. Yeah, that was that was actually that was that was my fault. I was in the uh, I was in full um, mode and didn't realize that uh, the call was going to be coming in at the time that. Oh, no problem. I mean, that is kind of, it is kind of cool, though. Maybe that's a good omen. I mean, we happen to call right at that awesome moment when you got that great news. Totally. It's kind of, it is kind of a cool thing, and it's kind of cool that we're able to even discuss it in the interview, you know, that that uh, we connected uh, right when that was happening. And, you know, you guys were both also in a movie, and I don't know how you feel about it. I personally think, and let me preface this by saying I've been a lifelong Michael Bean fan. Uh, you know, I, I've loved Michael since way back in the day. The fan, I think, was the first time I really mm-hmm. took notice of Michael's performances, oh. and I've followed him ever since. Now, here's where it gets crazy, because I loved, of course, The Terminator, and I loved all these things. But for me, personally, my favorite movie until The Victim for Michael was Planet Terror's, uh, the, for the part of the grindhouse, uh, Planet Terror, with Robert Rodriguez did. I absolutely loved oh. him. Uh, the, he and Jeff Fahey in that were just amazing. So, w- having said that, I thought, okay, you know, Michael has always been great, but it's somehow he keeps getting better and better and better. And I'm going, hold on. This is, you know, a lot of actors kind of rest on their laurels and they kind of get 
to where they're complacent <laughs> when they but no not michael he just keeps getting better and pushing himself and pushing himself so when i saw him in the divide i was like mm-hmm. i knew that's where you were headed <laughs> yeah, i was like my goodness this guy he just keeps pushing the boundaries of what you expect him to do and i thought the divide uh from the standpoint of acting was just a pinnacle because I'd seen it right before I saw the victim. So I was like, wow, I just don't think it can get any better. Then, of course, the victim kicked it. (laughs) I'm sure Michael has, like, a ton to say about it, but I can just say to you, um, we love Xavier Jens and that whole cast, and we are actually planning on working with them on something next year. Uh, It's in the process right now. And uh, the fact that Xavier even has me in that movie, I feel um, honored and blessed. And... um, I think Michael can take it from there, but I think uh, I agree with you. His performance is just amazing, and it was wonderful to watch him do it. And I would, again, say, you know, uh, thank you. Uh, I appreciate uh, your praise. It means a lot to me, because uh, we all worked very hard on that movie, and I think um, what I like so much about that movie is that I think that everybody in that movie, across the board, is really good. And there's like no false moments, you know, from any of the actors in that movie. And um, Milo, uh, Vin Camellia, uh, I thought did an outstanding job. Um, and um, Michael Eklund, who's a Canadian actor, who's kind of taken off because of the, that performance, uh, it did an amazing job. And of course, Roseanne Arquette, and on and on. But the interesting thing about the, that movie was uh, really the director, uh, Xavier Jens, who we plan on working with again um, next year, actually. And we have a project that we're trying to do uh, with him, and I think we'll get done with him, um, that is going to be, the, um, uh, well, it's called The Farm. It's been announced. It's, uh, it's kind of a zombie movie. But uh, uh, he is a director who really lets his actors kind of improvise, go off script, um, you know, write uh, material themselves, and so on and so forth. And uh, I was given so much freedom as an actor. We also, we, we shot that, um, you know, um, in sequence. So uh, usually when you're shooting a movie or a television show, you shoot the end first, you shoot the middle of the show, you shoot at one location, then you shoot out at another location, then you shoot out at another location, you're all over the all over the script uh, from day to day. But, you know, uh, when we made that movie, the first day of shooting was the first day and so on and so forth until we finished making the movie. It was was shot in sequence. And uh, 35 years I've been working as an actor. I've never had that experience uh, before, which was great. And um, also we were given so much leeway that we could um, improvise and write our own scenes and things that the script kind of would move in different directions than it originally was headed when we got the script. And we had a writer on the set uh, that kind of helped us if we came up with ideas or improvisations. And if Xavier liked what we were doing, he would just go with it. And to give you an example, um, the story uh, really um, uh, uh, of my character was really truly... Uh, in the screenplay, in the original screenplay that, that I went up to shoot in uh, in Canada, um, I was the antagonist and was the antagonist from the beginning of the movie until the end of the movie. And there was no um, 9-11, you know, uh, survivor. And there was no fireman um, kind of deal in that script. And you so basically... I was able to kind of create this backstory for this guy and really become a character that in that movie, everybody else loses their humanity. And my character kind of has lost his humanity um, because of circumstances that we don't aren't made very, very clear, but certainly had something to do with 9-11, and then kind of finds his humanity towards the end of the movie. And um, so, I mean, for me, it was like, it was the most uh, amazing experience I've ever had as an actor of, of being given so much rope to, like, you, you know, um, you know, have fun with. And um, so that's Xavier, you know. And then Xavier would let actors just, you know, 
whatever he found interesting, he'd point the camera at. And then other actors who, you know, thought they, their, their scenes were going to be the big scenes and stuff sh- being shot that day or whatever, you know, things would change, and all of a sudden the actors became kind of upset with certain other actors. And there was a lot of animosity on that set because of people kind of stealing scenes and 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 writing stuff themselves and and Xavier, you know, just pointing the camera, whatever he liked. So that really helped create the tension on the set, and it was a very tension-filled set. And I kind of stayed out of it because I was um, uh, my character was kind of a loner. But uh, it, it that that set broke into like two camps who really uh, had it out for each other. And uh, it was very, very intense, you know, hostility between uh, the actors on that movie. Wow. Uh, that's Xavier, I think, kind of planned that, that, planned that from the beginning. I think that was kind of what he wanted when he let us all just kind of um, uh, write stuff and, 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 and rewrite and change things. And, uh, you know, Michael... Uh, Eklund, that role that he played, he's the guy that, uh, if you see the movie, uh, I'll just describe him as the guy that ends up wearing the dress in the movie. Um, if you'd read that script, you know, the, the script that I read when I was coming up to Canada to play that role, I think that character had maybe, you know, a half a dozen lines, maybe ten lines or something in the movie, and was very inconsequential in the, uh, as far as the characters went. He was one of he would have been like the last because it was a much smaller character. But Michael Eklund was such a, is such a great actor, and uh, he was able to um, do so many kind of improvisations and writing and so on and so forth that he would have created that character. I mean, he he created that character. That character was not written for him. He wrote and he, along with the writer Aaron Sheen. Uh, Aaron was the one who helped. Uh, write uh and rewrite for us um and they created that character and um and again like i said i mean he he had a very small role in the movie and he ends up um, you know almost stealing the, the movie i would say uh and and you know it pissed some people off and um so it was an interesting it was an interesting uh set to be on a lot of tension i've worked with uh, a lot of uh directors uh and uh Guys like Billy Friedkin and uh, Michael Bay, and you know, there's, there's a. I've been on a lot of sets that there's there's tension on. You know, I've, I've worked with Jim Cameron, and 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 and, and I myself, when I was uh, directing The Victim, I was very. Uh, I call it passion. Other people call it anger, um, but um, you know, uh, there. I think that that set had more hostile feelings towards one another than any movie I've ever been on. That's for sure, you know. And uh, so it was interesting. Uh, but I think it was planned from the get-go by it, Zombie. It, it would make sense. I mean, the film, you can definitely feel that. Uh, it transfers well in the in the picture itself. But one of the things I like about it is what you described here. Uh, you guys were able to really, you know, invest a lot of yourselves into it. And uh, and I think it, it it really makes you appreciate the film that much more when you realize how much investment each person made. So it's really cool that you were able to invest so much of yourself in it. And that makes me even want to watch it again. Uh, I, I haven't watched that one as many times. I watched that one twice. The victim I've seen, you know, over a dozen times. I just, it's one of those movies that you know, <laughs> I, I got to watch it again and again, but you know, the divide, it, it was so difficult. Uh, it, it's, I want to let our friends know out there. It's not an easy film by any stretch of the imagination. It, it really asks some very, powerful questions and it doesn't give you any easy answers and that's why i felt like it was it was harder like i could only sit through a couple of times i have the blu-ray now i'm gonna have to watch it again and and even study more what you were doing because that that gives it a whole new dimension yeah it it is i've i i kind of uh uh described it as a requiem for a dream like you know and it not and i'm not I'm not comparing that our movie to that movie. That was a great movie uh, with some great performances, uh, but it is. It didn't make you feel good, you know. And it's not the type of movie that you walk out of *Requiem for a Dream* and go like, you can say, you know, like, man, those performances were, you know, really great. Um, and it was a really great movie, but it really made me feel 
not so great. And um, that's the that's what the divide is, and that's what the divide always was. And um, you know, um, when we made the victim, um, we decided to go kind of opposite of that and to play and kind of have fun and uh, and and play it. In, you know. Um, um, in a fashion that was like again more grindhouse kind of over the top kind of fun um um you know good guy bad guy lots of i mean you know basically i wanted to make an exploitation movie and i didn't have any money so i couldn't i didn't have any money for special effects makeup so you know i couldn't be i couldn't do zombies i couldn't do i didn't have money for extras i didn't have money for for anything really so i had to depend on like the, the the old dependables which is basically sex and violence so i put as much of that into it as i possibly could and then you know i threw in a little bit of torture and um i had enough money to do a little bit of action a day or two of action and uh like i said i shot it in 12 days and then the, i said like you know you know, I'll throw in a serial killer too, because that's always good for <laughs> you know exploitation. You know, so it was just pure, pure exploitation, and to and to look at that movie and to really, uh, you know, it was really meant to be kind of fun and meant to be a kind of a, a wink and a nod. And there are, you know, if you've seen it many times, you'll <clears throat> notice that. Um, um, you know, there's a shout out to, uh, the Quentin and to, um, uh, different directors. My name is, um, Kyle and, uh, in the movie, um, which is the character that, uh, of course I played in the Terminator. Yep. And, um, there is a opening sequence that we kind of like, um, style after David Fincher because David Fincher and I have kind of a little bit of a past that people always ask me about because they got kind of cut out of Alien, Alien Three, I guess it would yeah. be called. I forget yeah. what they called it. And um, and um, I have a sequence that is a driving sequence, which is the um, oh Kubrick, yeah, yeah, yeah Kubrick, Kubrick. kind of yeah. Sorry, sorry, kind of a shout out to Q- Kubrick. And um, there is a book that is sitting it's interesting that you mentioned the fan you probably have not seen this but if you go back and look um i you don't see the whole thing because i couldn't show the whole thing because i didn't have the i didn't have the um uh the rights to the to the story or the rights to show that book, but if you look on my nightstand in that, that you'll see that that book sitting there that we pan by, you just see the F and the A. Uh-huh. It's actually the book, The Fan, and that, um, you know, is the movie that I made that you talked about when you kind of introduced me. And um, so there's a lot of that kind of wink and nod, and, you know, at the beginning, you know, based on true events, not... You know, you right. know, kind of, it's meant to have that kind of fun, fun kind of like, don't, we're not taking ourselves very seriously here, you know, we're just kind of having fun and, and, and we, you know, we want you to come along for the ride. And, uh, and so that's almost the exact opposite of what, what the divide is, which is a really heavy duty, hardcore, hard hitting, um, you know, piece that makes you kind of like want to take a shower after thank you seen yes it. that's it that's the feeling you get exactly i agree i agree <laughs> now you know uh, jennifer was in was in a film i was going to ask her about because she got to star with captain america in the movie called puncture and uh and i was like wow look jennifer's in a movie with captain america what a cool connection but i haven't got to see the movie i just saw it uh, on the on the video shelf the other day, I thought, "Wow, this looks like it could be really a compelling movie." I liked the the plot, and I thought it could be really good. I wanted to ask her about it, ask her what she thought of, of being involved in the film, The Puncture, and and how she thinks it turned out. Because I'm I'm about ready to watch it. Well, first of all, um, the movie turned out great, and there'll be another surprise in that movie for you when you watch it. Um, and I am in it, and I my name's in the opening credits and everything, but a lot of what I did got cut down. So you're going to see me in the movie, and my scenes are with Captain America, but it's a lot less than what I originally shot, which does happen a lot. But uh, 
I'm just happy to be a part of it. The Casson brothers are dear friends of ours, very talented directors and writers. And, uh, uh, you know, Chris Evans is very handsome and very talented, and I felt happy to be a part of the movie with him. And um, uh, it was it was fun. We filmed in Texas. And um, you have to let me email me when you see the other surprise in there. I will. Yeah, it's a I good will. movie. Think it's, it's a very good movie. It's a good movie. Very good. And based on actually, not just like ha-ha-ha based on true events, it's actually specifically based on a specific lawyer that went through this in Texas. Wow. Yeah. The other Captain America connection to me was when I was younger, and we were, you know, back before there was all these superhero movies, we were tossing out dream actors to play Captain America. Who do you think was top on my list? Michael Bean. I was like, Michael Bean has got to play Captain America. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We had him for uh, Cyclops. You did. You I always, I always, we were always saying we, we wanted him to play Cyclops. That's right. So see, he's been in our minds. And now I'm thinking after seeing you and seeing what you could do uh, in the victim and, and the, the different, uh, the, the body language you could exhibit, Jennifer, we think they just need to throw out Scarlett Johansson and uh, Chris is going to have to retire because uh, we think you and Michael need to step into the Avengers and yes. just take over. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, I think that it, it, it's interesting, you know, the, the, the whole superhero deal is kind of a one-way road for an actor, you know. Um, these guys get hooked into these deals, and... Uh, you get hooked into playing these characters and you play it like three or four times and they're these major, major movies and you get identified so much with these characters that I think that it's, um, I think I'm kind of glad that I never really got one of those franchises. But I even, mean, like, I even Michael in The Terminator, it's like Kyle Reese, right? And he's got this crazy fan base and people running up to him, people excited. But... The people, the, the 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 stereotype of that movie is the robot, and I'll be back. You yeah. Know? So it kind of still keeps him a little bit anonymous and able to transition into all the other fun roles. If I was in it, if I was in Terminator Two, Terminator Three, Terminator Four, you know, if I would would have been able to play Johnny Ringo, or if I would have been able to, uh, you know, do um, the Divide, or 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 you know, because. Um, you know, you just get so. But you know what? Uh, that's and before idea. Chris Evans played Captain America, you know he had a nice, nice but, little uh, fan but, base. But I, but I actually, actually, last night I was watching a movie, um, and uh, Sigourney Weaver was in. She, just, she seems just fine being able to pop in and out of um, and movies. She's right, and, being Ripley and, and, and everything. And she, she, she was Ripley, so in four or five of those, so that that maybe is not the case. I'm I think Chris Evans is going to be fine. I think Jessica Alba is going to be fine. I think Scarlett Johansson is doing just fine with her. Woody Christian Allen Bale. On. Pretty much welches Michael Bean's theory right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's absolutely right in a lot of ways because we've seen that happen with so many actors, but nowadays I think with the, with a talent like Christian Bale playing Batman and all the other things he's done, he can step out and not have to worry anymore because he already had a career kind of going and he's still got a career there. Yeah. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Business, yeah. I just think the business is so different now that um, I don't think there is such a thing as like, oh, don't do commercials because you're going to get stereotyped and not get this role, or don't do a series, or don't. You know, I just think there's so much going on and it's all overlapping and interwoven, and I just, I just don't think it's the same. I think you can, you know, every once in a while, yeah, somebody gets stuck in something, but um, I just think it's it, it, there's just so much more with the internet and and. Uh, web shows and, and every network having, you know, series and, and the new movie networks coming out. And it just, I, it just opens up your audience so much um, and makes uh, people more available to everyone. Yeah, you know, and I think, I guess I have to, like, second-guess myself because I've always thought of that about, like, a t uh, television series. And these guys that do these television series and they're on for, like, seven years and they make, like, you know, $25 million and, and, and do the CSIs and so on and so forth and, and are on for, and, and then there's no way that they can step out and play other roles, but that's not really the case. Actually, I just saw uh, Vince D'Onofrio. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I just saw Vince D'Onofrio in um, Jennifer Lynch's movie. Chain. And yeah. uh, he, he was, uh, have you seen that movie? Oh, yeah, man. That You talk about that movie and... Uh, if you want a hell of a night, watch awesome. that in the divide. You'll get kicked in the balls twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rough, rough. yeah, he was he he was awesome in that. He was movie. great. He yeah, a wonderful, wonderful actor. I had a chance to do one of his um, uh, an episode of his show, and uh, I worked with him. I was actually doing um, 
I was actually doing Aliens while he was doing Full Metal Jacket, so I kind of knew I've known him for a long time. Um, but he was the Jennifer Lynch movie is uh, really good. I really enjoyed that. Um, did, did I even like the end? Did I like the end of that? Uh, you had uh, in the credits, you can hear them living a normal life in that house, and uh, you know he wanted it to be a little more clear. Um, I think that was the only thing you had trouble with was the end. But but it was pretty damn. Yeah, well, it was a great performance too. I mean, that's what that's what I love so much about. It. Both of them were good, but he, uh, Vince is like, I mean, he's outstanding. It's weird that you say that about Vincent D'Onofrio. Uh, I had the pleasure of interviewing Vincent uh, not long ago because of his directorial debut. His his uh, uh, yeah, you know, we saw that. Yeah, that was a good one, and I got to tell you, he's right up there with you. See, in my top five. You both share a space in there as my top favorite actors because there's you and there's Vincent D'Onofrio right side by side. Uh, so it's interesting that <laughs> you say that. that because I think you both are so incredibly versatile and incredibly talented that you could play anything that's thrown your way and do it in an amazing job, honestly. Well, that's that's very nice to say, and um, um, uh, I, I you know I really appreciate that and. Uh, it means a lot to me because I do try hard, and I uh, have always uh, uh, tried very hard. Um, and um, the, the 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 performances that um, that I've been uh, allowed to uh, play, that they've all meant a lot to me. And 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 you usually don't get really good roles like I had in the Divide, the Terminator in uh, Tombstone, in The Rock, and, uh, you know, those... And Michael also really surprised me in The Victim, because when we were shooting it, he was directing everybody and everything, but then when I watched the edit, he does a lot of things in there that are pretty damn cool, and I didn't see them happening when I was on set. So I think Michael's got... Um, you know, he just got that thing. Well, he what, was very good. One of the things... One of the, when, when I made the movie, it was made on such a small budget... Um, I didn't want to look um, bad, so I told um, the people who put up the money for the movie that I would do the movie, but only if I had all of the control of, of the production and... Media control, final edit, all of that kind yeah, of Yeah, creative yeah. control, production, and then who we sold it to and so on and so forth. That's another reason why, you know, that... That, that that movie means you know kind of a lot to me because um, I wrote it and, and you know I helped edit it I helped score it I helped uh, you know do the sound design on it I helped you know every little detail of that movie um, I know about every flaw in that movie I'm aware of <laughs> and um, you know uh, if I if I had more money you know if the movie is uh, if it's well received, you know, and if it does well, and uh, uh, um, I'd like to do a, a director's cut of my own of my own cut because I'd co I'd, co I'd go back and I'd, I'd change a few things and I would uh, I would uh, I would add a few things if I cause if I had had more money. Um, I, I, yeah, it would have been a little different movie. I think it would have been even more fun and 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 and, and better, but. Um, we'll see, we'll see how it does. And, and, um, I'm busy. I'm so busy. I've had such a busy year cause I've been, you know, promoting, I pr was promoting that and that got released. And then I went up, up to, uh, London, Canada. And if you don't know it, I'd never heard of it, but there's a nice little town right outside of, um, Toronto. And, um, uh, I shot a movie called Taft, which is kind of like Rocky, and I kind of played like the Burgess Meredith character. We also shot a movie of ours um, right before that that was sort of an experimental thing for Blanc Bean Productions that is uh, written and directed by Travis Romero. So he shot that, and I'm in it too, and then he went up to London, me and his son came with him, and then now he's working on a TV series. My so goodness. Wow, and I got I got offered, and we got more blonde bean stuff going on here. I got offered this this, this like kind of this television series where um, it's kind of like uh, the Sopranos, but it's comedy, right. you know, right. and it's really politically incorrect. And uh, it'll be interesting to see um, um, how it is received. I think it's really really funny material and it really gives me a chance to, to do a, a little bit of comedy and uh, I play this uh, uh, kind of drunken cop who's uh, in with the mob. It's about this group of uh, this 
kind of a uh, kind of mafia like guy who's been kind of like kicked to the side from his by his family because he's kind of the the you know the, the you know just doesn't fit in that well. But anyway, he rub, runs his 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 criminal empire out of the back of a, a video store. It's called Twenty Four Hour <laughs> Rental, and it's um. It's kind of like a uh, Parks and Recreation mixed with Sopranos. That's it's awesome. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how uh, how it does. So, um, you know, and there's also um, um, there's a movie Hidden in the Woods. That um, is that where you were going? Yeah. Uh, uh, it, basically, uh, we at Fant- we went to Fantasia this year with the uh, the victim, which is a very big genre um, festival. Oh, it's the Montreal. biggest. Yeah, Fantastic. that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we were grateful to be in it. We'd been there the year before with the divide, and we loved the people, and we felt, you know, the victims just felt honored, and we got to put those laurels on our, you know, on our website and on the packaging. So we're there, and Michael was also asked, after the movie was accepted, to be on the jury uh, for the best new uh, filmmakers. And one of the films in competition was a movie called Hidden in the Woods. It's a Chilean director named Patricio Valdarez. And he did a movie, Spanish-speaking movie in Chile, called Hidden in the Woods, that is um, doing the festival circuit right now and is being shopped around. That's the Spanish version. And Michael fell so much in love with the talent of this guy and the, the way he made this movie that we optioned the remake rights. So we are right now in the works of getting that translated into English and putting together the remake. And uh, I don't know, you have anything else to say about Hidden in the Woods? Well, yeah, I, I, I do. I've, I've got a lot to say about it, but I mean, you no, know, I'll wait maybe in, in, until we make it. I, I'll tell you a couple of interesting things about it, though. That, I, that uh, when I saw the film, I asked um, around and I said, I, I, I'd love to meet the filmmaker, you know, because I was interested in it. Because I know that uh, because it's subtitled. Um, you know, it just isn't going to get seen that much in the United States. Not very many su- subtitled movies do. Right. And I knew that, you know, I, I kind of thought, well, I'd like to, to do an American version of this. So I asked to meet the director, and and I did. And I met him, and he was a kid, really. Um, again, kind of a fanboy, and uh, about 22, maybe. 20, 27. Is he that old? Yeah. Is he, oh, he's about 27. He looks young. He looks younger, though. But he was uh, there with his girlfriend, and uh, who produced the movie, and um, they came, and we met, and we talked, and and he was seemed kind of excited to meet me, and excited that I had liked his movie so much, and that I wanted to to redo it, and um, the, he, I think he thought in his head that I I wanted to direct it. Well, and like, well who's going to direct it? And he was like, Michael was like. I said you're gonna you're you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, oh you're gonna direct it, you know. And he was like j- jumping up and uh, jumping up and down. But the interesting thing about it is that he had a camera around his neck, and he was like, hey, "Do you mind if I take some pictures?" You know. And I'm like, "No, that's cool." So like, I, you know, he took a couple shots of me, and then Jen took a couple shots of me and him and his girlfriend and so on and so forth. And we kept talking for a while, and. um I um, eventually asked him about his movie. I told him I thought it looked great, and it really like had a really good look to it. And uh, he was telling me, you know, the budget and the cast and so on and so forth. And I said, oh, by the way, what what did you shoot it with? You know, I wanted to know which which camera he used. And he held up the camera he had around his neck, and he said, "This." It was basically the Canon. It was a Canon. <laughs> nice. you know? And I just was. I was just like stunned, you know, how, you know, technology has gotten to the point where this guy's got a camera around his neck that looked like my old Canon A1 or whatever it was called. And he shot his whole movie with this thing. I mean, it was just incredible. And uh, so um, anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's that, that story. And the reason I like this movie is because it's, it's extremely, Extraordinarily a violent. Uh, there's a lot of, of violence in it, uh, and it's a really hard movie uh, to watch. However, however, you know, <laughs> I, I personally, I personally do not like um, normally uh, the genre movies 
um, like Saw, for instance. You know, right, I think right. the filmmaker is a great filmmaker, but the content of those movies, to me, um, is just not my style. I just don't, you know, even the Zave did a movie... Frontiers, yeah. Frontiers. Right, right, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and even the end of that, to me, gets a little, like, you know, like, just, it's just kind of like um, violence for the sake of violence. It's brutal, really, yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't like that. I don't like violence for the sake of violence. But the reason I like this movie so much was because it is so violent, but I never had the feeling ever while I was watching the movie, and it's so violent and so, you know, horrible what happens to these people. Um, uh, but I never felt that it was done for any other reason than to serve the story, and that it, it, they, they weren't using, he wasn't using violence just for the sake of violence. And, 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 and um, that's kind of why I want to redo it, because there is violence like that in the world, and there is like this... This, there's a lot of bad things that happen, and um, 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 I just like to try to try to try to try to do a, a version of it that everybody can see because it's really again it's really really hard to watch, but you don't get the feeling that it's 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 being done just for the sake of uh, oh let's see how violent we can be in the movie you know right it, right. it, all, it all feels very uh, real. And um, so we'll see. And, and, and you know what? It's not completely done. We don't. Have, we don't have a. We are. We're, Jen, Jen. Jen's. Jen's the producer. She says it's a, it's a go. So we'll see. Um, that's in the works. Well, Patricio Valadares. Patricio. Okay, okay Patricio. I'm going to say it. I'm going to get <laughs> it right. Like, okay, I'm not going to repeat. He's also a comic illustrator, and his influences growing up were the Grindhouse films, the horror movies, and uh, the action movies like Terminator. That was his big influence, so I'm sure it was a thrill when he finally got to hook up with you guys. I bet that was like a dream come true. Well, great great uh, research that you, that you did on that. Um, you know, the interesting thing is not only did Michael, through the whole time, want to see Patricio, there's a market now at Fantasia, and what the funny thing is, is I went, you know, I had they just set up meetings for you and your producer, besides, you know, so I'm an actress who's become a producer and an actress, and I'm walking into these meetings kind of blindly going like, oh, this is interesting. This is the other side. And uh, Patricio and uh, Evelyn are sitting at the table. And it was just like synchronicity because they had seen the victim and loved the victim and had set up a meeting with me to talk about us producing with them. Meanwhile, Michael was falling in love with his, his work. So the meeting setting up uh, that Michael wanted me to set up with them, and they ended up meeting was just, you're right, a dream come true. And in fact, what's so funny, Evelyn uh, did produced it for him, kind of like us, you know, a similar kind of couple, um, and um, has starred in movies of his. But she contacted us this week. She's also an illustrator, and she is also a, uh, she's putting together a animated uh, short right now. And she's asked Michael and I to um, voice it for her. So wow. we'll probably end up doing that, too. That's very so, cool. Yeah. You know, very yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So, but that's good. that's really good research on him. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I, I had to find out a little bit more about it because I was pretty excited. <laughs> I don't even think Michael knew he was a comic illustrator up until this minute. Uh, he knew he liked Grindhouse movies, but I don't think he knew. No, he didn't, didn't know more than that, did you? No. So you've educated. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's <no>. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's great that is awesome now Johnny I know you had a question over there before we go I've been taking up all the interview I'm sorry my friend go ahead and ask oh, your question. I, I just got to say you know I've been a fan forever you know I've, I love the Na Navy Seals is one of my favorite movies it was great seeing you as Reese but really the one that I really kind of turned my head and I was like oh my god he is so amazing was Johnny Ringo oh yeah you know I mean Tombstone I've probably seen that movie like a hundred times it's true you know and, and oh, wow. And then I'm also like a big fan of Bill Paxton. So, of course, you know, you get both right there. And then let's throw in, you know, Val Kilmer. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, how was that? I just want to know, you know, that was like an all-star cast for me. Yeah, well, that is, a, you know, it, when you go through that movie, you'll see, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of talent in that movie. You know, um, Billy Bob Thornton's in it. And, uh, I mean, it's just jam packed it's the best cast um i've ever i've ever worked with that's for sure um there's about probably about 15 actors in there that billy zane and um 
Jason Priestley, John Corbett's in it, uh, Thomas Hayden Church, of course. Yeah. Thornton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Powers was yeah. Powers was my buddy. Yeah. Oh yeah, Powers Booth. <laughs> yeah, she's Miller Nicholson. So anyway, we we I, um, I had a great time shooting that movie and uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. And again, you know, I would just uh, tell your audience and tell you guys that, like, from an acting standpoint. You know, you need a good part, and when you have a good part, that's when you can, you know, shine, and that's when you can, you can, you can be really good. Um, and I got sent that script, um, and um, I read it. I called my agent up, and I said, uh, I want to play um, Doc Holliday. And they said, uh, my agent said, okay, and uh, I'll, I'll set it up. Um, and um, he called me back and said, you know what, Val Kilmer has been offered that role. And I said, okay, um, and I want to play Johnny Ringo. And they said, okay, well, let me see about that. They called me back, and I got together with the director and uh, ended up playing Johnny Ringo because I could, I could read, and I could read that it was a wonderful role. And uh, I have three movies that I've done now that, like, it's very interesting that I, I I have kids all the time that are like 20, 25, you know. Um, I mean, the, they weren't even born when the, when the when I did the Terminator, you know. That uh, I'll be sitting like, I, like re- just recently I was at a gym and I was sitting on a bike and I was in you know, a biking and the guy next to me like kind of tapped me. I took, I took my headphones off, and he said, uh, are you Michael Bean? And I said, yes. And he goes, hi, my name's Kyle so-and-so. And he said, uh, you know, my dad named me after you. And uh, he said, I love the Terminator and blah, blah, blah. Terminator, Aliens, and Tombstone uh, are movies that have, like, transcended, like, um, generations. And so I get, like, 20 two, 23, 24-year-old kids all the time that come up and say, like, I love Johnny Ringo or I loved uh, uh, really Aliens, too, Aliens. And I get a lot of kids that have seen Aliens and somehow watched it when their parents were watching it or whatever. And so it's kind of like, uh, I think they're kind of like going to, I mean, you know, I don't like using the word because I think it's it's kind of, I don't like to, like, make myself sound good, but they're kind of like classics, you know, because I can well, they tell are. Yeah, when they are, yeah, when, you know, when, when kids are watching them and they weren't born when I was making them and they're saying to me, Hey, this is my favorite movie of all time, or this is my favorite character of all time. Um, it's probably, um, made me feel better, uh, as an actor, um, you know, than, than anything um, else that I've done these films that have kind of transcended generations. So it's been, uh, it's been very rewarding and it, 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 it's taken a while, but uh, it's been very rewarding. Well, I got to tell you, Michael, I know you guys have things to do and we are getting to the close of the interview here, but I gotta, I gotta say once again, both of you, uh, I look forward to every project you do together uh, I look forward to projects you do separately. Uh, I think you're better together, but I love to see you separate. Uh, so I, you know, I just I, I love it. I love everything you do. You guys are bringing the heart and the soul and the passion back to genre filmmaking as well as anything you do. Um, even if it's non-genre related, I'm still there. It doesn't matter. Uh, but but we love you. We love you very much. We're huge fans, and uh, and it has been uh, an incredible honor for us here at Nightwatch to be able to to do this interview with you. And before we go, I'd like to give you a chance to tell any of the fans out there anything you'd like them to know, maybe a website or whatever you'd like them to look for uh, to know how to keep up with what you guys are doing. Um, Michael's pointing at me. Um, so I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> You can um, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, we're both filled up on Facebook um, with friends. So if you go to Jennifer Blanc Dash Bean, the public figure site, or just subscribe to either of our personal sites, you'll be able to get updates that way. Um, the other deal is um, at Jennifer Blanc B um, or Je- at Jennifer Blanc Bean, but probably at Jennifer Blanc B is uh, is Twitter. 
And then uh, if you go to grindhousethevictim.com or blancbeanproductions.com, you can get a lot of information that way. Um, and thank you for having us on Nightwatch. And, you know, we got a lot of stuff coming up. So, you know, you guys have our email. Um, and uh, Amanda has our email. And just stay in touch. And we'll we'll be doing the next uh, interview after we do the... Uh Patricio's movie. Yeah, we'll get Patricio <laughs> on with us, and uh, he's a he's a character, and we got to get Xavier on your show, and and you'll really be cracking up. Oh, I will love that. Yeah, uh, we are such fans, and and like like I say, once you're part of Nightwatch, once you've been on here, you're part of our family, and anything we can ever do, we're going to be here to help you guys. Um, but you know, by the way, I just want to tell you guys, Danielle Harris loves you guys. Oh, we love her. Um, Danielle's awesome. <laughs> we just love her. <laughs> She's great. Yeah. She's a little spitfire. She is, and what a good um, person. Together, okay? Thank you so Thanks, much. Guys. We look forward to it. Uh, Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so you. much. We'll be in touch. I can't wait. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Good night. Thanks. I'm, I'm just so, this, this show is so amazing and such a dream come true. Both of you are just the top. You are the cream of the crop. That's exactly it. That is exactly it. So thank you again for that, guys. And thanks to all of you out there, all of our friends who hang out with us every week, spend your time with us. This is really something we look forward to, spending our lives together every single week. And honestly, without you, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be doing it. And without our great affiliates, no one could hear it. So thanks to our great affiliates. And wow, I don't know how we're going to top this one, Chris. We'll do it somehow. And virtual Hugh. Yeah. (laughs) Say hello, Hugh. Oh, yeah. All the way from Scotland. This is Hugh's song, everybody. The Hugh song. (laughs) Scott Swahead. Scott Swahead. Give the voice of Scott Swahead. Scott Swahead. Scott Swahead. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's the Hugh song. (laughs) Yay. And, uh, hey. So, where's his song? Darn it, Hugh. (laughs) Well, you know how it is with Hugh. He's, uh, he'll be here next week, though. Yes. Scott Swahead. Yeah. Okay. Always a pleasure. Can't wait till next week. Great time. And until then, everybody. Speak to you later. Good night, everyone. And pleasant nightmares. Night Watch is a production of Jackalope Media in association with Jackalope Radio. With your host, Todd Sheets, and co-hosts, Hugh McClanahan and Chris Weisbach. Also with Julie V, producer, and Amanda H, associate producer. Featuring voice work from September Day. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces, bright and early for their daily races. Going nowhere, going nowhere Their tears are filling up their glasses No expression, no expression Hide my head, I wanna drown my sorrow No tomorrow, no tomorrow And I find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had I find it hard to tell you, I find it hard to take When people run in circles, it's a very, very mad
find it hard to tell you I find it hard to take The people run in circles It's a very, very You can also listen to Nightwatch on the following incredible radio stations. World Talk Radio, Livid Radio, Hawking Radio, Planet Tokyo, Sessions Radio, Power 3201, Z106 FM, Haunted Voices Radio, K94 Rocks, Glue 92, Anomaly Radio, Mystic Age Radio, 96.3 Shane FM, Flash FM, Nomad Radio Network, Yapster FM, My Retro Rock Radio, Double X Radio, 1611 AM, Australia, KBMA, Sports and Entertainment Radio, Robin Valley Community Radio, Radio Crackle, Planet Paranormal, The Black Vault Radio Network, Radio Free Bob, KCOR, WCRP AM, 1620, Rock and Talk Radio, The Point, 99.1 FM, Extreme Indie Radio, Omnicron Radio, WPAZ 1370 Blast Podcast KJO 97.3 FM Indy 104 FM O Radio WDSP 101.9 Fox FM Ghost Village Switch Pod Pure Country Headcase Radio Slack and Bracken Radio Future World Red Finger Radio Catnip Radio Scuttlebutt The Butt at Radio.TheButt.net BNRX Internet Radio for the Extreme KCIA at KCIA1.com Extreme Radio Tampa Ryukin Radio X100, SRN1, the 1KX Network, KJAG Radio, Random Radio, Riff Ref Radio, Exile Radio, WOQAM Radio, FCN Radio, Grey Point, Brand Name Radio, CKDU FM, Leaf Pile Radio, Rocktown Radio, Bizu Homegrown Radio, WWRW, the Worldwide Radio Web, The Dust at www.onthedust.com, Radio Vox, Atlantis 102, Land's Edge Radio, Mix 94.5 FM, 91.5 FM, Ghost Radio, Jet City Radio, Hits 99.9, Extreme Radio 1077, Ghost Radio X, The Beat, Shadows of the Night, East Hill Radio, Hot 97.7 FM, 91.5 FM BVIR, Bearcast Radio, Kudia Radio, World Talk Radio, Surge Radio Network, Radio End, Dragonflight Radio, Beefy Radio, K94 Rocks, Anomaly Radio, Power 3201, and Independent International Radio, Lips 106 FM, Dragonflight Designs Radio, Indie X Radio, The Free Constitution Network, WOQ AM 1690, The Mix 94.5, AM Stereo 930, Radio Enigma, Steel City Radio. If you're an affiliate and your name is not on this list, send me an email and I'll add it as soon as possible. Remember to check out all these great stations for their own days and showtimes for Nightwatch. And don't forget, you can listen to Nightwatch anytime you want to by going to the audio chamber at www.nightwatchradio.com and downloading your favorite episodes for your own personal paranormal pleasure. And as always, you can hear Nightwatch live every Tuesday night right here at 9 p.m. Central on jackaloperadio.com.